Hello, I'm Charlotte Collins, and we are back with a brand new season of The Sherlock Show. We have chats with the team, some autumn fashion with Polly, delicious dinner inspiration with Summer, and you come shopping with me, and lots more. Now, it's not exactly a normal show this week because, of course, it has been a week since Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II passed away. So I'm here today with Heather, with Laura, to reflect. We're going to reflect throughout the show on everything this week has seen, what it's felt like. I mean, welcome both. There's just so much to dissect, really, isn't there? What has been your kind of overriding... I mean, there's probably not one emotion for any of us, but your overriding feeling, your overriding emotion, Laura? I think... I. Um, after yesterday, seeing her coffin be leaving Buckingham Palace, uh, I was so I felt so proud to be British. Mm. The fact I felt so lucky that we had her for all that time, um, and it, it is sad, but she also lived an amazing life. And I feel like she must be really tired and ready for mm. a little sleep. And yeah, yeah, it's I my overwhelming feeling, I guess, is being proud to and lucky to have lived through her reign. And I think for loads of us, that feeling of that, that's a surprise, right? Like that's mm. not something that we felt for quite a while in this country. And it, it sometimes it takes something like that, doesn't it? To kind of, I don't know, remind you of why it's great to be British or whatever. hundred percent. Mm. Like even, um, I think what's really got me actually, like I've been not, I wouldn't say numb throughout the whole thing, but I've just felt like really odd about it. Like mm. obviously very sad, but just kind of like, I don't know, I guess it maybe a bit of disbelief in a way, because mm. like you say, mm. she's always been there. And also just like in, interested in what comes next and all the processes. It's been fascinating to kind of learn the protocol for everything. But I think the last, well, from yesterday onwards, just seeing everyone queuing up to go and see her as she lies in state, that's what's really got me. Yeah, like, has it? That's been the thing. Yeah, like just how much people care and what an amazing mm. thing it is actually to go and do. And, you know, they've planned it all to perfection. Mm. Like, yesterday was yeah, yeah, it really was. Uh, the music to me was just those, yeah. like the drums when they left and then the choir yeah. as she ended. And the actual death march. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking yeah. about yeah, it. it. Yeah, was, it was amazing. It yeah. really was. I well, think she'd be proud. She would be proud. Are you tempted to go? Uh, having now, I watched the news this morning and they've kind of got almost like a live stream and they mm. have actually online got live streams. Yeah, they do. Um, of everyone waiting. It's definitely made me way more tempted. Really? 100%. Mm. I don't know. It does feel like, you know, it's probably an eight hour queue, but we can yeah. do that. Yeah. It's yeah. part of history. Yeah. yeah it's true. It feels like everyone's very jovial in the queues and kind of like sharing memories. And then I think as soon as they're in Westminster mm. Hall, it just obviously takes on a very different atmosphere and it looks like yeah like quite an incredible sort yeah. of emotional thing to mm. do. It, it's weird to ask kind of what a favourite moment has been because you know, favourite is a, is a weird mm. word to associate with what's been going on. But exactly as you say, Heather, I think for so many of us, it's just been so interesting. It's yeah. been, you know, it's a piece of history and there's all these things happening that we didn't know about. I mean, yeah. what's been your favourite, favourite part so far? I think we've seen so much of her formality and the role that she's had to play. And I think that has become, I guess, I've realised it more now she's mm. died mm -hmm. of of what she actually did, mm. like the duty yeah. that she did to every single day of her life. Mm. It is unbelievable. But I also think a little bit more has come out of her being just a normal mm. lady growing up, a normal mum, children tucking at her mm. skirts mm. and wanting to steal the camera. And she did that alongside her duty, mm. which I think is just, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. And I know she has all the surrounding support, but she still dedicated yeah. herself like that every single day, really until the yeah. day she died. Yeah, yeah, so true. Heather, what about you? Favourite moment? It wasn't a favourite moment, but I think it's the one that really sort of got me early on. It was the day after she died, so yeah, last Friday. And it was, I was just amazed, and I am with all the royals, you know, how quickly they've had to just sort of mm -hmm. get into like, right, we're in business mode mm -hmm. and we have to go and do this. And it was when... Um, yeah, King Charles arrived at Buckingham Palace, just come down, you know, hours after his mum had died and they'd been in Scotland and he sort of arrived out and straight away he was out there shaking, shaking everyone's hands. hands and everyone was shouting, God save the king. And that kind of really got me. Yeah. Like, wow, he's had like no time at all to kind of, 
process this and now mm. it's we, happening. We went to, we took the children to the palace on Sunday and sort of had a string of luck where we ended up right at the front and the police started to clear the way and they said the king is arriving. Oh, wow. so cool. And there was this real sense of excitement for him coming mm, and yeah. it felt like within the sadness it was kind of excitement for what's to come yeah. as well and yeah it was great yeah yeah yes it's been a real kind of dual thing of yeah tr and, and trying to find the respect for the queen but also kind of giving Charles that space and it feels like as a country, we've done that really well. Yeah. And every comment about the Queen then kind of ends with, of course, save the King. And it kind of, yeah. the balance really is there, isn't it? You went down there, you had that experience. Heather, have you been, have you kind of physically gone down there? there no, there so being Buckingham Palace, I didn't, although yeah, my boyfriend was there when it was announced by accident because wow. we wow. were, uh, we'd gone out for dinner in Soho and he happened to walk past the palace Gosh. and he was like, oh, you know, the, there was a crowd there anyway because yeah. mm -hmm. people were suspecting that, yeah, the flag was lowering and he was like, oh, wow, because he wow. wasn't like glued to his phone. Yeah. So, yeah, that amazing. Ended up, luck. Yeah. I ended up finding out when I got off at Oxford Circuits and everyone was just shopping as normal. So I think, again, yeah. that it just didn't really, it was like, oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it didn't feel like so everyone weird. else had realised mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. It felt Weird. Yeah. But nicer to be with people, I think. Right? Yeah. I it was a really weird vibe when I had. I know. I, I, yeah. I, I was still in the office and then I left the office and you kind of wanted to like, say to everybody on the street, like, do yeah, you know? And yeah. everyone's yeah. on their phones. But then, like, that would be weird. Yeah. So, yes. no one well, so it was that. a whole weird afternoon of speculation, it really was, wasn't yeah. it? We were all sort of doing work, but I don't think anyone could really concentrate no. fully because it was yeah. a sad, strange atmosphere. I know. I know. It's kind of. I feel like I'll almost kind of miss it next week. Mm. Like there's something been apart apart from kind of all the unifyingness and and you know the somberness of it all. Like mm. there's something that's been I don't know. It's we're almost, all feeling it together. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know what that is, but it feels yeah. I it's don't not often in our lives that that happens. Yeah, yeah. I guess the you're whole right. nation feels something. And to every together. day have I mean entertainment is totally the wrong word, but to have something so interesting and new mm. and novel happening every single day. I don't know. It's just it's just been it's been pretty cool yeah. as, as well as all the other things. All right, we're going to come back to a little more Queen chat uh, in a bit. But first, let's take a quick look at the key pieces that Polly has picked up for autumn so far. Hi guys, I'm Polly Sayer, and I'm here this month to show you some of my favourite things that I bought so far this season, and why I think I'm going to be wearing a lot of them this autumn. So let's get cracking. Okay, so my first thing that I'm going to show you is this pair of silver leather trousers. It's a bit of a curveball, but I think, stay with me here. A pair of leather trousers is obviously an autumn staple. I wore leather trousers on repeat last year. So I've just updated them for this season with a silver pair. These obviously really lend themselves to wearing for the evening. I've just paired them with some court heels, a t-shirt and a blazer. But genuinely, I think I'm gonna be wearing them with a pair of trainers and a jumper for the weekends as well. They're a really buttery soft leather. Um, they're kind of like slightly longer 90 shape as well. A nice high waist, a straight leg, which I absolutely love. Just feels really modern and contemporary. They're from Zadig and Voltaire. They are not cheap. I won't lie to you, but flipping hell, I love them. So I think I'm gonna have to keep hold of them. So my next item is this incredible jumper from Reformation. Now Reformation are really known for their dresses, particularly in the summer, but I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised to see when I went into their store that they've got a really incredible selection of knitwear as well. And this jumper, Oh, totally caught my eye. It's a cashmere mix, I believe. It's super soft, not at all itchy. And what really sold it to me is these incredible sleeves, which are slightly longer, a big oversized cuff. I also feel like this shade of brown, those kind of like latte tones are a really big trend for this season coming up. So I would wear this with a pair of, you know, black leather trousers and some trainers. I did size up in this because I do always think it's good to size up in knitwear. It's just beautiful, so, so soft and really cozy. And I almost can't wait for it to get a bit colder so I can wear it more often. My next choice is a bit of outerwear. It is this incredible khaki trench, which is by Moussier Paris. A trench, as we all know, is a bit of a transitional autumn staple. I've got a couple in a kind of classic stone colour and I wanted something that was just a, something a little bit different basically and I saw this incredible green one and something about it really caught my eye. The fit is amazing, that green I think you can kind of treat like a neutral um, as with a traditional trench. I wear a lot of neutrals 
kind of day to day and I throw this on and it just feels a bit more lively and a bit more interesting. It does come up quite oversized and the length is amazing, um, it's super, super long. Um, I always love a coat to be nice and long personally, especially when it comes to a trench. It's a nice mid-weight material as well, so it is really good for right now, but I thought you could layer that up over knitwear once it gets a little bit chillier. Next up is a pair of jeans. So I've kind of fallen out of love with denim over the last few months. I just couldn't find a pair that made me feel really good. I tried on a lot of pairs, I'm not gonna lie, and then I came across these, which are from Redone. Again, they're a kind of investment price when it comes to jeans, but I felt that, you know, if they make you feel good, then it's sort of worth it. I wanted a longer length, 90s style, a slightly slouchier fit, not too baggy. I tried these on and they completely fit the bill. The length is amazing, I love that slightly raw hem. The wash for me is perfect, a uh, sort of light wash, but not too light, but they have relaxed really nicely and it's a nice sort of stiff denim that, you know, is not gonna kind of relax with too much wear. I've worn them a lot since I got them with a bit of double denim, with trainers, etc. I think these are gonna be my hero pair of jeans for the upcoming season. My next choice is a slightly different take on something I've been wearing a lot of over the summer. Matching sets are something that have been a huge trend over the past few months, but I wanted something that could transition a little more into the autumn season. And this set, which is by All Saints um, from Erna, aka Mercer Sevens capsule collection, is so beautiful. It's just plain black sort of satin silk, I believe. Um, but what I love about it is it's got this kind of contrast stitching on there, which just makes it feel a little bit more elevated and something that I would wear with trainers in the daytime. But I'm going out tonight, for example, I'm just gonna chuck on a pair of Gucci slingbacks with those, maybe add a red lip and slick my hair back. And it just feels like evening ready without being overdressed, basically. And my final hero piece to mention is these trainers. I really feel like I'm suddenly seeing a lot of people wearing Adidas Sambas, Adidas Gazelles. So naturally I had to snap up a pair of these. Um, I just love them in red because again, if you wear a lot of neutrals, it's kind of fun to add a pop of color in your shoe or your bag or whatever. These just make my outfits feel a bit more lively. Um, I've been wearing them with my slouchy 90s jeans. I wore them today with my black leather trousers and a jumper. Just feel like I'm gonna get so much wear from these and they're perfect for now when it's too rainy, too wet for a sandal, but maybe not quite boots weather yet. And those are some of my favorite autumn buys so far. Uh, let us know in the comments if you're buying anything similar and I hope this has given you some inspo. See you next time. Thank you so much, Polly. So many great pieces. Now I'm back with Heather and Laura to reflect a little bit more on the Queen and things we've watched, things we've seen. I have to say, do you know that on um, After the Funeral, BBC One are playing Paddington 2. Did you know oh, that? Really? I didn't just know just like, that, but that makes sense. It's so sweet. The whole Paddington thing, I think we've talked about this this week, is so cute because that's a new that's an association like 70 years into her reign. I mean, it's pretty new, <laughs> yeah. but it's obviously really captured the nation. And It's that, amazing. It's so sweet. My son is four and we have watched every day of the summer holidays. We've watched Paddington 1 or really? Paddington 2. <laughs> he is completely obsessed by it. And it's been a way of getting him interested yeah in it when it's difficult for him to understand. And yeah, I, I just love that association so much. The fact that they had to announce yeah. on the breakfast, on breakfast news channels last week to please not bring any more marmalade sandwiches no, no. down to the palace. Brilliant. It just, that is like, I, that will stay with me forever. I think it's the sweetest thing ever. <laughs> it's so British, I love it. Um, anyway, so other things to watch Paddington, it's like maybe you do want to watch Paddington and feel that bit closer to the queen. Um, what else would you recommend if you're, if like I said, you're going to be missing your dose of it all next week. What did you, had, um, Laura, you've particularly enjoyed something on BBC One. Yes, remind me of the it's actual called name. It's a tribute to Her Majesty the Queen on iPlayer. Yeah, that is, it was brilliant. I just watched it, as you said, everything's been rolling and just inspired me to watch a mm. bit more. I'm just completely fascinated by her life. And it just takes you through the ages of her life. And more than anything, it highlighted to me how much she crammed in those sort of last few years. Mm, wow. it, it's just unbelievable, you know, the the weddings, the jubilees, just, yeah. she has just done, you know, Ireland, she's just done so much and just still kept pushing for change and mm. uniting people until the very end. Yeah. It, it was really amazing. And okay. her outfits to, yeah. to look at throughout as well were, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, fun, love that. There's a quote here. I assume it's from that. 
saying we're all visitors to this time, this place, we're just passing through. Our purpose here is to observe, to learn, to grow, to love, and then we return home. Yeah, so that was lovely. not from the documentary. Yeah. I just read that somewhere and I it really kind of struck a chord mm. with me of, well, I mean, how fragile life is mm. really. She was lucky to have so many years, but we are, we're just passing through yeah. and look what she's left and didn't she do a good job? Yeah, there's that quote, obviously, I mean, the much used quote now that uh, grief is the price we pay for love, which is her worst. And it's yeah. just like... It just kind of makes everything make sense. I don't know, there's yeah, something about yeah. those words that really kind of clicks life into place a bit. And she was pretty wise. As well, she was she? so mm. wise. Yeah. Heather, anything that you've loved, that you've loved watching? So I was a big fan of The Crown. I know you weren't so no. much, but it has <laughs> made me like, well, yeah, maybe I'll watch a bit mm. more of that. But no, there's also, I haven't seen it yet, but it came out earlier this summer. It was a film called Elizabeth, A Portrait of Parts, I think was its mm. name. And yeah, it was a sort of documentary about the Queen made with her. Um, with one of her late friends who was sort of directing it. And again, I think it just looked amazing. It was just a real intimate look at her life mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, a celebratory. I think it was done obviously ahead of the Jubilee mm. as a sort of celebration of her 70 year reign. So I think, yeah, it's a nice new film. So mm. it might be one that people haven't seen before with sort of footage yeah. that yeah. people haven't I've seen. I've loved looking at the clips as well of that one with her watching the horse racing. Uh, oh my God. That, oh, the, the you mean when her, what, her when horse, her horse won, wins. Yeah. <laughs> that is, I had never seen that Neither, clip before. Neither, it's so brilliant. For those who haven't seen it she it's yes yeah, she her horse is winning at, at I don't know Asper Royal or something Asper, Royal Asper. Asper. <laughs> uh, yeah I would have thought so and she um I mean the delight uh, yeah. on her the pure unadulterated but there's joy almost you almost see her want to get up yes, and be yeah. like but then yeah. she remembers so she's a queen yeah, so yeah. she yeah. kind yeah. of yeah. brings it back again it was just so brilliant and, and the guy next to her obviously her trainer or whatever, oh yeah he's, he's and he like, he also has the same moment because yeah. he like realizes it's the queen before, yeah. before yeah. he grabs her yeah. he's like yes <laughs> so yeah it's so lovely it's so lovely I also in terms of funny moments I love the story that Theresa May told in Parliament, um, all the kind of former Prime Ministers and kind of important uh, members of Parliament uh, got up and spoke and kind of said, said nice words on Friday, I think it was last week, and she told a story about, I mean, I mean it's, just a, it's just a little story about dropping cheese at a, at a picnic and picking it back up and kind of hoping nobody saw her and putting it back on the plate. And she looked up and she realised the Queen had seen like the whole thing. <laughs> she tells it, it's really worth trying to find the clip because she actually, who knew, Theresa May, Hilarious raconteur. Yeah. <laughs> she tells the story really, really well. well. There's a lot of laughs. Um, and it's just, there's been lots of lovely stories about her kind of wicked humour and her. Yeah, yeah her sense and, of fun. and the Britishness of it, the one with her and David Attenborough when they're looking at the sundial. Oh, I haven't heard oh, yeah. that. Yeah, it's just so good because he, he, they're going around, um, I'm not sure which palace mm. it was, but they're in the grounds of one. And he sort of makes a comment that the, um, the sundial is in the shade mm. and they just have this moment it's such a generational thing as well the two of them together sort of mimicking about how <laughs> somebody has been stupid, stupid. enough oh, yes, I do know this. Yes. <laughs> and so at the stupid. end she goes do you think we might move that <laughs> <laughs> I love that amazing what a legend so many lovely memories all right uh, we'll be back shortly with more uh, but first take a look at a delicious autumnal supper from summer perfect for when the night starts drawing in Oh, I had my first pasta evangelista. Evangelist? Evangelista. Evangelist. Evangelist. Linda evangelista. <laughs> pasta Linda Evangelista, special edition. <laughs> they should do a Linda Evangelista. They should. They should. Yeah. They should collab. Oh my God. Yeah. It was just to a be, fresh pasta ribbon. To be fair. Hang on, with what? How do you say that spicy sausage? Nduja. 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 That one. Um, <laughs> it, it was lovely. <laughs> Hi, I'm Summer and today we're going to cook a prawn tamarind coconut curry. It's super delicious and it's that time of the year where it's starting to get a little bit cooler and I just naturally want something warming and comforting and this hits the spot. So let's get going. Okay, so we're going to start with a spice mix and we are going to add some mustard seeds. I'm just going to do about a tablespoon of the mustard seeds. Do a half a teaspoon of turmeric. Um, some coriander. I'm almost out. Have to put that on the shopping list. Teaspoon of that. You can tell I like cumin. <laughs> a big batch of that. I use cumin in everything. A nice big teaspoon of cumin. And then we're going to put some cumin seeds and some fenugreek. Oh, I smell it already. It's so yummy. And I find all these spices quite warming as well. And so I just mix that up and that's ready to go. So 
Now we're going to go on to the aromatics. We're going to use one whole onion. I've already cut this in half. And I'm just going to cut it again in half like that. And then I just slice like this. And then we just cut up, chop up into little pieces like that. Try not to chop your fingers off. We're also going to add some garlic. And all I do is I give it a big whack like that, chop off the ends of the skin, and then I just chop like that, just roughly. And that's it. Next up, we're going to get a knob of ginger. Now, I've done this before, I think, but the way to peel ginger, super easy, you get a spoon and then you just scrape it like this. And that way, you're not wasting all that ginger. This is the best little hack. Okay, so now you've got your knob of ginger, and now I'm just gonna grate that. I just find when you grate it, the flavors are much stronger and it works really well. Okay, so that's done. Let me take you through my aromatics. I've done a bit of prep. Um, so we've got our onion, garlic, and ginger. I've got four dried chilies. I just like, they, they give a subtle heat, which is really lovely. You can obviously use fresh as well. We have some lime leaves, fresh lime leaves, and actually these are fresh lime leaves, and these are the curry leaves. Some lime, and then for garnish, I have got some purple onions and some coriander. So I think we should just go over to the stove and let's get cooking. So now we're gonna start frying off our spices. I'm just gonna turn the hob on. And we're going to start with some coconut oil. We'll just melt that down and then we'll add our lovely spices. Okay, so it's nicely melted down. Now I'm just going to add our lovely spice mix that we made earlier. Just want to stir this for a couple of minutes and the mustard seeds start popping and then you can start adding your aromatics. Okay, so now they're starting to pop. You might be able to hear that. And now we're ready to add the aromatics. So I'm going to start with the uh, ginger, garlic and onions. I'm going to pop that in. I'm going to add the dry chilli as well. Okay, we're just going to stir that around. So to this now, just while that's cooking down, I'm also going to add some curry leaves. And I'm just going to crush them up like that, and that just releases the flavour. So now we're going to add some tomato paste, about a tablespoon, so I'm just going to put that in. Quickly mix that through. So now we're going to start layering. I'm going to start with my stock. Okay, and then to this, I'm going to add the coconut. I'm going to put a squeeze of lime in. And we are just going to mix that through. Okay, so I've got my veg. I'm going to start with the sweet potato. I'm going to cook them for about five minutes till they just become a little bit tender. I quite like mine firm, but if you want them to be really soft, I've obviously just cook them for a bit longer. So we'll pop those in. And then when they're ready, we'll add the rest of the veg. I'm just going to check the firmness of the sweet potato. Oh, and that's looking good. So I'm now going to add the rest of my veg. We have some broccoli and mushrooms. So I'll just put all of those in there. I'm going to give them a good stir and let them cook for a couple of minutes and then we're going to add the prawns and the tamarind and then we're going to finish off the dish. So at this stage I put the rice on so I would serve this with a side of greens and some rice and this lovely coconut curry. I'm just going to add some more lime. My vegetables have now been in for about five minutes and now is the time to add the prawns and the tamarind. I might start with the tamarind actually. So tamarind is, has quite a sour taste to it. You don't want to put too much. So I'm just going to put about a tablespoon of that. And this is going to give it a nice, rich colour and just sort of add some tanginess to the dish. OK, so now it's time for the prawns. I bought my prawns from the fishmongers. I bought them whole. I've chopped off their heads and I've deveined them. And I've put all the shells and the heads in the freezer. So the next time I come to make a soup, I've got some stock waiting for me. I'm um, just going to add these and you just want to cook for a couple of seconds until they go a nice pinky orangey colour. Oh my goodness, look at all those colours. Right, now it's time to serve. So 
the lid off. I would just serve this with some rice, some greens, but look at all these lovely flavours. So add some lime, add some coriander, add a few bits of onion. So that is my prawn and tamarind coconut curry. If you have any comments, please leave them below and I hope you enjoy. Take care, bye. Thank you, Summer. You always manage to make it look so easy. Right, I'm back with the team now and we have to talk, I guess we have to speculate a little bit about Monday, the funeral. I mean, again, like, like all of it, it's just so interesting, mm. isn't it? Um, what are you kind of, I don't know, expectations are so weird, but what, maybe we'll start with where you're going to watch it. What are you going to do? Laura, you've obviously got kids. How are you going to mm. engage them in the whole process? I'm, I think we're going to go down um, and be at my mum's. Mm. I think it will feel nice to be with her. Mm. Um, and I'm hoping my sisters will come with their children. They're, they can entertain each other <laughs> so, so that we it. can all focus. Yeah. Because yesterday I so enjoyed mm. being able to have the peace to kind of, you know, watch it all. Yeah. And it's more tricky. But I, I also think that they should witness it and get involved in mm. it. But yeah, I think it's a day to feel British and be yeah. together and... It will be a sad day, but a kind of a momentous mm, day. I think so too, Heather. Yeah, I think, yeah, just staying at home and watching on TV. I haven't seen too much of the sort of live action stuff because it's all on sort of during the day when mm. we're sort of working. So I'm looking forward to kind of, yeah, dedicating a good mm. few hours to it and watching it in real time. Maybe open a bottle of fizz at the end. Yeah. Look, you know, just a, sort have of a, a cream toast. tea. Yeah, my exactly. neighbour said she yeah. was there. They were, afterwards, they were going to have like little... English tea party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's nice for after. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I think that makes it's sense. A bit like it would be if it was a funeral. You yeah, yeah. Wake up. Yeah, it's been so, like, exactly. We've watched all the weddings, haven't we? You know, on TV that have been really celebratory and lovely. And I feel like this will be not a similar atmosphere, but a similar like event. Yeah, and something that. Yeah, I think ultimately you do want to sort of celebrate her life. Yeah, and sort of. Yeah. Absolutely. And there has to be a kind of transition as well, doesn't there? Like, yeah. into, like, okay, we'll choose this, it's just going to be normal. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll be weird. Um, what about you? Yeah, I want to watch it on TV. I know, obviously, I understand the want to go down there, but yeah. I think you'll see, like, 0.1 second of Well, we of the do whole it so well. We televise yeah. it so well. Yeah. This is it, exactly. Mm. As you say, it's like all the weddings and everything. You can't get a better view, really. Mm. Than, and they're than predicting ha however many people, I think millions were mentioned at one yeah. stage, wow. but I don't know how yeah. true that is now. But I, a lot of people are going to be around. I think it's really nice to have gone and done, like, I went and saw the flowers yeah. on Tuesday this week. And I think it's really nice to have said, I've done that, yeah. yeah. But I don't feel the need to kind of go and physically be part of it yeah. anymore. I mean, the queue is like, yeah, no, it's not not. From, I'd rather just observe yeah. it yeah. on TV. Yeah, I, I think I'm, and, I'm with you. Yeah, and you can kind of that way you get to you can. I don't know. I've just I've just been a junkie for it all, so I really want the kind of full seven hours of it. But yeah. you get the commentary, don't you? You get totally. the people who know what's going on and have been there with yeah. their anecdotes and explaining what's happening and why. And I yeah. think that's quite. I who's love who. that part. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The things to do is Ben's, Ben's dad, my husband's dad, always takes um, takes a little radio uh, and an earpiece to football, so you can listen to <laughs> yeah, the commentary. No. So maybe oh, one should idea. do that. Like yeah. you should take your, you know, listen oh, to the radio whilst in the queue if you feel like doing it. But I think I think TV is probably the best place for it. Um, I mean speculation on outfits is obviously another thing you know it's it's I was talking about this with somebody yesterday and talking about kind of the fashion associated with yeah. it all sounds kind of trivial but also it's not because the costume what mm. they wear has been such a large part of the yeah. ceremony of it and mm. you were talking about the swords yesterday and what you noticed with yeah I noticed and I don't know if somebody might be able to tell me but I noticed love to know, that yeah. Charles and William carry their swords backwards and Princess Anne and Edward carried their swords forward. Oh, that would be to do with know. rank. It must yes, be a exactly. rank. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'd love to know what the... Yes. You've got a military family. Can you find out the answer? I'll, I'll yeah, you yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Um, but yeah, loads of things. And I was doing some research on, on the kind of... The, the fashion formalities um, yesterday. And so they have to, the, the women who are mourning, if, they, if they're mourning a sovereign, so this didn't happen at like Diana's funeral, for example, but if they're mourning a sovereign, have to wear a veil, mm -hmm. have to have their face covered. And that is um, a kind of hangover from Queen Victoria because, yeah. you know, she wore her mm -hmm. mourning out of it yeah. for like 40 years. Um, and they can't wear coloured jewels, so lots of pearls. Yeah, so of course. Yesterday, Kate was wearing... Yeah. 
pearls that were uh, Diana's, mm. gifted to Diana in 1981. Yeah. I mean, loads of things like that. I'm sure yeah. Camilla will be wearing her yeah. signature choker. Yeah. Camilla, I mean, it should be Queen Camilla. Yeah, should Queen say. Consort Camilla. Queen Camilla, consort. Camilla quite. Um, Heather, anything you're kind of looking forward to in and around the funeral? Uh, in terms of, oh, sorry. I don't know, in terms of, in terms of the yeah. ceremony, is I it the fashion? fashion, is it the... I, I feel the fashion is going to be so muted. I think mm. it like it's not the time to come out in a killer dress, no. is it? So I feel like I, I'm looking obviously yeah. interested to see what everyone's wearing. Yeah. But I think just seeing all the family together mm. and mm. yeah, just well, they all looked immaculate. They yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, they have nailed the appropriate brief mm. so far. So yeah. I'm sure we'll just be seeing a lot more. Yeah. Kind of just hope it black. brings everyone together. <laughs> Maybe not every single member of the family, but you know Harry and William and everyone. I, know. I hope yeah. it's sort of a a binding well in event. times of crisis yeah hopefully Often it's in the way binding exactly yeah, I hope so that's my hopes for Monday my anyway. yes our hopes for the Royals yeah yes. exactly um, right thank you so much both I could just talk about this literally all day uh finally Laura you headed to the high street this week to do a little bit of a new season try on here is what you what she found in Mango with a come shopping with me Hi, it's Laura, Managing Editor of Sheer Lux, and I thought as we head into the new season, I'd pop along to the high street and head into Mango to see what's new, so let's go. Okay, first up is this gorgeous little puff sleeve knit. I love the bubble detailing and these gorgeous sleeves. And look at the detail on that. Okay, I found this table with the softest cashmere on. This is such a gorgeous gray. And that's 100% cashmere for 119 pounds. It's pretty good. This is such a classic and so good for the transitional period. Okay, pretty pleased with this find. This is pure leather and such a great price. So amazing, you can find these things on the high street. What a selection of goodies. Okay, first up is this super soft with this lovely gentle V. Really nice, loose fit, not too bulky, so we'll fit under coats as it gets cooler. It's a great find so far. Okay, continuing with the knits. I think this looks really expensive. I've never really thought of mango for denim, but actually, I think these are pretty nice. Okay, I might have found my favorite. This leather skirt with this gorgeous slit feels super luxe just the right amount of slit at the front and for under 200 pounds. Next up are these cool, slightly smarter take on a pair of dungarees. I love that the slimmer leg means that you can wear them with a pair of heels. Okay, I'm trying on a different style of jean here. These are quite wide leg and I'm quite small, which is quite hard to wear. But because the denim is not too thick, I think they fall really nicely. I've styled them with these really sweet little ballet flats. These are the softest leather and 35 quid. Absolute steal. I love this oversized striped shirt. Really nice for the office. Always better oversized. And I've teamed it with these black slim leg. Sort of a cross between, a, they're a thick legging, but they're actually really nice. We have this gray long sort of cardigan coat with this really expensive looking belt, I think. Really cozy as the days get cooler. One thing Mango do really well is trenches. I already have one of theirs and I love this kind of little more oversized version with this really sweet shoulder detail and big lapel. 
and I think this looks like a really expensive piece to find on the high street. Okay, and lastly up in Mango is this sleeveless roll neck with this exaggerated shoulder detail, which I think is a really useful transitional piece. Okay, there you have it, my three faves from New Inn at Mango now. That's it from me for now. All products will be linked in the show notes below. I hope you enjoyed that. Happy shopping and I'll see you soon. So that is it for today. Thank you so much to Laura, Heather, and of course, Polly and Summer. We are back on Tuesday with new season fashion with Anna Bromelo, a roundup of the best beauty advent calendars out this year, an interview with a hair icon and a very special new launch. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye-bye.